Today we're going to be talking about slow and fast carbohydrates and which one of them might be best for training and racing. This is a topic I've had various people ask about, namely because there are a few different products out there that contain slow carbohydrates which have claims around being superior for performance. So we're going to break it down in this video and I'll give you my overall thoughts on the topic. If you're new here then hey, I'm James and I'm a sport nutritionist who also races in triathlon too. All right, so as I mentioned, there are different sports nutrition products out there made by companies who all want you to buy and use their fancy products. On the fast carb side of things, you've got companies like Morton, Science in Sport, Precision Fuel and Hydration, and Never Second. And then on the slow carb side of things, you've got companies such as You Can or High Five slow release products. So first up, let's talk about what fast and slow carbohydrates actually mean. In short, it's to do with how quickly they are broken down, absorbed into your bloodstream and then affect your blood sugar or blood glucose levels. As the names for each might suggest, fast carbs are absorbed and enter your bloodstream at a faster rate than slow carbs. Fast acting carbohydrates include glucose, sucrose, maltodextrin and then combinations like glucose and fructose. Slow carbohydrates include amylose, isomultulose and fructose on its own. Now at rest, you should see a very big difference between these carbohydrates in how they affect your blood glucose levels. Fast carbohydrates will usually cause a significant rise in your blood glucose, followed by a relatively quick drop back down again. Slow carbohydrates, on the other hand, will usually cause a much more gradual increase in your blood sugar levels and then a much more gentle decline as well. This is clearly shown in the research and there's no reason to suggest otherwise. However, it's important to say that this is at rest and not in relation to exercise. So this is where we need to be more specific and talk about the claims of these slow carbs and how it relates to your training and racing. To my eyes, there are three main potential benefits to slow carbohydrates, and that is, they provide a slower but more constant supply of energy, they don't cause a spike in glucose or insulin, meaning your blood sugar levels don't vary drastically and cause fatigue, they allow you to burn more fat during exercise. So let's cover these off and see how the theory matches to performance and what the research says. So this whole provide a more constant supply of energy thing is an important one. In theory, it's great, right? If your muscles get a slow but more constant stream of energy, then you won't get the highs and lows of your blood sugar rapidly changing and you'll feel better. But it's not quite as simple as that. Because let's think about what this actually means. The reason you get a slower and more level stream of energy is because it takes longer to digest and absorb the carbohydrate. In practical terms, this means you have more unabsorbed nutrition in your intestines. We know that gastrointestinal discomfort negatively impacts performance, so really, is it beneficial to have a slower absorption of carbohydrates if all it's doing is sitting in your gut. We also know that the more carbohydrates you absorb, the more carbohydrates you burn and the greater the contribution to energy. It's been shown again and again that this is clearly beneficial for performance, especially in something like a triathlon. So realistically, the more carbohydrates you absorb, the more you burn, the faster and harder you can go. Now related to this is the claim about being able to burn more fat when you use slow release carbohydrates. If you've listened to my stuff before, then you will probably know what I'm going to say here. But in truth, if performance is your goal, then burning more fat due to your nutrition of choices not really what you want. The more fat you burn, the less carbohydrates you burn, which really is the direct opposite of our goal. And last to cover here is the glucose and insulin changes. As I mentioned, it's absolutely true that you see big differences between the two in terms of how they are absorbed and how they affect your blood sugar level. But this isn't the same during moderate to intense exercise. We know that when we exercise, the amount of insulin we produce is greatly reduced due to the effect of adrenaline. And this means you don't get the same sort of blood sugar changes during hard training or exercise in response to food as you would at rest. So the potential effect on your blood sugar here is not as pronounced as companies would like to have you think it is. But it is worth still considering. If your blood sugar goes up and then drops back down, 
is that likely to affect your performance? In truth, probably not. There have been quite a few studies which have looked at this, including something called rebound hypoglycemia, and I actually did cover this in a recent video. Most athletes don't even feel when their blood sugar level drops, and it doesn't affect their performance at all, and it naturally goes back up to a normal level quite quickly afterwards. There are, however, a small proportion of athletes who might suffer negative consequences, and this is something we'll cover. So what does the research say about these slow-release carbohydrates? hydrates compared to fast carbs in relation to exercise. In general, it's reasonably negative towards slow carbohydrates. There are plenty of studies which show either no difference or negative effects, such as worsened gastrointestinal symptoms or performance. And honestly, I've really struggled to find much in the way of positive outcomes when it comes to slow release carbohydrates on endurance exercise performance. I did find this in UCAN statement based on a study they funded in 2009, and I think it's a pretty reasonable sum up of things. Although I don't really agree with the post-exercise part because we actually want fast acting there too to replenish muscle glycogen stores at a faster rate. However, I think a slow release carb as a pre-exercise supplement is probably the biggest potential that I see. As I mentioned in my previous video, some athletes do suffer with rebound hypoglycemia and one possible way to work around this is to use different forms of carbohydrates such as slow acting carbs. You could potentially have a slow release carb pre-race to help reduce the likelihood of your blood sugar level dropping lower than normal. However, as I also mentioned, there are other strategies that you could use as well, and instead just use normal fast acting carbs, which have been extensively tested and shown to have positive effects on performance. Overall, I would say the current evidence is strongly in favor of using fast acting carbs for sports nutrition, and it's certainly the route that I would go down and advise athletes on too. If you do want to find more out about whether or not you should consume carbs in the hour before exercise, then you can watch the video I made by clicking here. Otherwise, have fun with your training and racing, and I'll catch you next time.